The Marinwood Community Services District Design Review is next on our agenda. This regards their park maintenance facility. May we have a, oh, excuse me, and um, Commissioner Paoli? Yeah, plus other communications, I assume. Plus too. other yeah. communications. Yeah, I, I just want to report that I'm going to be recuse myself from this meeting, uh, being within the 500-foot radius of the, the project uh, uh, of making that decision. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Are there any other communications that people wish to report from on the board um, uh, before we get into this item? See, see none. Um, okay, well, we have a staff report, please. Sure, I'm going to turn it over to Michelle to give you the staff report for today. I'm going <clears> to <throat> try and break some habits as well, and try not to um, <laughs> try not to intercede with what Michelle is making uh, is talking about quite as much as I, I sometimes do. Although, of course, I'm here for questions. <laughs> Michelle, you want to get started? Good afternoon. Um, so the design review application before you today is an application by the Marin Community Services District um, to replace a maintenance facility and relocate it with a new maintenance facility. The project site is located at 775 Miller Creek Road in the Marin Wood community in San Rafael. The parcel um, on which the site is located is over 14 acres in area and the project site occupies an approximately 9,000 square foot area at the northern perimeter of the site. The parcel is owned by the applicant, the MCSD, and is home to the Marin Wood Community Center, Park, the Marin Wood Fire Department, as well as the district's administrative offices. So the application before you today proposes to replace the existing maintenance facility uh, the maintenance facility consists of two structures. The maintenance building shown in the photo um, before you was constructed in 1965 and there is also a modular building across from this facility that was built in 2001. The existing facility consists of a 2,000 square foot workshop, a 1,610 square foot fenced yard, a 935 square foot enclosed work area and a 169 square foot deck. So the district proposes to uh, demolish that facility and relocate its facility in the location of the modular building. The new facility would consist of a 1200 square foot workshop, a 1300 square foot enclosed and covered storage yard as well as a 1,960 square foot gravel yard. So the district installed story poles for the project on November 12th, 2019. And on January 3rd, the district notified planning staff that the story poles were removed. Um, they had become unstable from the winter storms and they interfered with the district's operations as the poles were located in close proximity to the existing facility. Um, we sent a memorandum out to the commissioners, I believe in mid-December, um, talking about the story poles um, and the operational difficulties they were um, um, creating for the district. So hopefully you were able to see those. Um, so both... Um, the existing facility and the proposed facility are located within um, stream conservation areas. That is because Miller Creek, as well as an ephemeral drainage, both uh, traverse the site. And under the countywide plan, they meet the parameters for inclusion as a stream conservation area. Um, the plan recognizes the importance of SEAs as these areas, quote, provide irreplaceable, vital, biological systems that provide critical functions for water purification, flood control, fish and wildlife movement, and native habitat. Consistent with the SCA policy bio 4.1, a 100-foot buffer from both sides of top of bank of both of the creeks that occur on the site are required for this project. 
Um, so as I indicated before, both the existing and the proposed project are located within a required SCA buffer. Um, this slide here in front of you um, shows in blue the SCA buffer. In green, it shows on this portion of the parcel those areas that are outside. And you can see both the proposed facility and the existing are in the SCA. Um, the countywide plan restricts activities within the required SCA buffer unless a project meets the exceptions to SCA compliance. The first exception applies to those sites that are located entirely within an SCA. So as you can see from this slide, as well as these additional slides of the parcel, those areas in green are outside of the SCA. And this little, little piece is here. So this site does not comply with that first exception to SCA compliance. The second exception to SCA compliance is a multi-part test. First, this exception states that if development outside of the SCA is infeasible, then the exception is met. The district has evaluated different locations for the facility, both on um, its owned properties and properties that the district does not own. So more details regarding these alternative sites are shown on sheet A 1.03 of the project plans. The district contends that development outside of the SCA is infeasible for this project. In addition, to, in addition, the exception to the SCA policies apply if development outside of the SCA would have greater impacts to water quality, wildlife habitat, other sensitive biological resources, or other environmental constraints. It doesn't appear that development outside of the SCA would result in greater impacts as stated under the policy. <laughs> so as is noted in the project staff report, the district has indicated that due to the expense and time that has spent, been spent to date developing this proposal, that it would likely repair the existing facility if design review, review approval is not granted for this project. The existing facility, as you can see here um, on this slide, is located closer to the top of the banks of Miller Creek and occupies a larger disturbance area than the proposed facility. Repair and retrofit of this facility is allowed under the SCA policies and would not require design review approval. Um, the biological assessment prepared for this project um, analyzes the effects of the current building configuration on the SCA in Miller Creek. The biologist states in the assessment that the current building configuration diminishes the habitat functions and values of the riparian corridor. And the biologist goes on to state that removal and replacement of the facility away from the top of bank would greatly improve habitat values on the site. In addition to relocating the facility away from the top of bank, the project would involve the removal of invasive plant species and the planting of native riparian species. In addition, the existing trail would be located closer to the creek, all of which are consistent with the SCA policies. Taken in its totality, the staff recommends conditional approval of the design review application. The project would result in beneficial effects to the SCA, including removal of an existing deteriorated structure located close to the top of the bank of the creek, the planting of riparian vegetation, the removal of invasives, as well as the reorientation of the trail. The staff report, um, in addition, identified two alternative actions for your consideration with respect to this project. That first alternative would be to direct the applicant to modify the application by repairing the existing facility within its current footprint and citing a smaller facility in the general vicinity of the replacement building. This alternative would address SCA policy issues and improve the bulk and the mass of the building. The second alternative would be to deny the application based on the project's inconsistency with the SCA policies. 
So this concludes my presentation, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have regarding the staff report or the presentation. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff at this point, just to clarify issues? Seeing none. Um, today we will have the um, applicant. Um, we'll have 10 minutes to present, um, pr present the project um, from their point of view. If there are um, members of the, every, everybody gets a chance to speak. If there are members of the public who are sp spokespeople for, who are representing an organization, um, they'll be giving five minutes and the general public will have three minutes. Um, uh, once the applicant is done with their 10 minute proposal, I would ask people to line up. Um, it's not a very big group, so it shouldn't be a big issue, but um, it'll be, a, a, um, uh, unlike in the past when we have asked everyone to fill out forms, we're now trying to have a process that parallels more closely the way the um, uh, Board of Supervisors conducts their meetings and I believe it will be more efficient. People will line up um, and speak. Everybody gets to speak just once, unless they're asked a question brought back up by the board. And um, then we'll close the public hearing and the, and the commission will, will um, take up the matter. Just generally like to refrain, uh, ask people to refrain from applause or worse, you know, booze, um, nothing like that. Um, and, um, uh, please speak directly into the microphone because that is um, how we have a public record. Um, the, the, and, and if people don't do that, then there's parts of the tape and the video that we cannot understand. So with that, I'd like to ask the applicant to please step forward. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, this is on. Oh. Turn it on. Hello. Hey, all right. Uh, you again, raise thank it. you. Uh, you can raise it up a little bit if it's not quite right for you. Yeah. Lovely. Good. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chairperson, Commissioners, I appreciate your time. My name is Eric Drykosen. For the past five years, I have served as the district manager for Marinwood Community Services District. For the past nine years, I've actually been a homeowner and a resident in the community of Marinwood, so I have some additional uh, stake in the Marinwood game. Uh, we put together a brief presentation to walk you through, uh, just to give you a little bits of background that I'm going to provide here, a little bit on who we are as a local agency. We are a local government agency. We have an independently elected board of directors uh, that serves as our governing body. Um, I highlighted in here the mission of the parks, which is you know, primarily to maintain and develop open spaces and park areas. In our case, this includes 25 plus acres of developed parklands and trails. 800 plus acres of undeveloped open space amongst uh, several buildings and facilities that were mentioned by Ms. Levinson earlier, including our pool and firehouse and community center uh, and other various items. We work hand in hand with our recreation department that annually serves thousands of Marinewood residents uh, and a lot of youth during summertime, upwards of 500 kids every single day that put together some of the events and uh, programs that you can see on top. Um, but primarily our parks department works as the stewards of our land and of our properties, uh, including Miller Creek that runs through a good portion of our property. Uh, we have 60 years of knowledge of working on this with facilities and the environment and the staffing and the equipment and we have a good handle on what is needed to be able to do this job after 60 plus years of being able to do it. Um, you can go ahead and move to the next slide, uh, Michelle, that would be great. Um, this just shows you a little bit about what our current conditions look like. This is, you know, 55 years of, of making do in the quest that I just mentioned of providing all of these spaces uh, as we continue to serve even greater numbers of not only our residents but other residents all throughout Marin County. Um, the process that led us to this point, you know, included not only consultation with our staff but also independent research that was mentioned earlier. We hired an outside agency to do a biological assessment, another agency to do a cultural and archaeological assessment of the area. Um, and those studies formed the basis of our initial study, which eventually led to our mitigated negative declaration that was authorized and approved by our independent board of directors. Um, I do appreciate Michelle pointing out that the 
the independent biological study certainly recognizes that this project will be an improvement to the riparian corridor that is mostly what I think we're focused on here today with the SCA. Um, we can go ahead and move to the next slide. Um, as was pointed out here, this is a picture of the entire 14 plus acre parcel. All of the area in blue is considered the stream conservation area. The areas in green are considered outside. Uh, you can kind of see slightly some of the other buildings and things that are in there, which is where our community center is, which is where our fire station is, and primarily the two large turf fields that house all of those kids and activities that you saw in the pictures on the first slide. Um, I do want to point out that it is also my understanding that amongst the exceptions, uh, it certainly also speaks to the uh, social and economic factor impact that would happen here. And building in these turf fields is just simply not feasible because it would immediately displace programs that serve hundreds of young people every single day during the summer and out of school months. Um, and we simply don't have another place to serve them at. Um, Moving on, uh, the other option that we did look at was next to the firehouse, but unfortunately ingress and egress is a severe uh, impact there because they can only enter from one area. And in consultation with the fire chief at the time, uh, there was a lot of concern about the need for emergency vehicles coming and going, not to mention if we ever have to expand the firehouse in the future, that's the only area we're going to have to do that as well. Uh, with that said, uh, I, I, I hope and appreciate your concerns and all of your thorough looking at this project. I am going to ask uh, Mr. Hansel of Hansel Design to really go through this and just, you know, I think, I hope that it leads you to the same conclusion that we've led to, which is every aspect of this project represents a significant, significant improvement over current conditions, and that includes environmental conditions, aesthetics, the efficiency and workplace that our, our workers need, as well as the safety that they need to do their job. So I thank you for your time. With that said, I'm going to ask Mr. Hansel. Uh, Madam Chair, thanks, sir. Madam Chair and uh, Commissioners, my name is Bill Hansel. Um, in addition to being the architect and bringing uh, 30 years of experience um, in Marin and San Francisco uh, Bay Area in general, I've also been a resident uh, in Marinwood for the past 15 years. And I also served as a director on the board of the CSD for about nine of those years, so I feel like I, I know the um, needs and of the recreation department and the whole CSD as a, as a whole. Um, try to bring that to uh, my experience in that area to the table as well. I also um, manage, uh, have managed the Mere Beach CSD and um, the Alto Sanitary District um, as a, another career. So. Um, in assessing, uh, in moving forward with what the district um, started out with in terms of options, um, we can move to the next slide, thanks. Um, I'll, I'll just quickly th point out a few things about the existing location. I just want to say that the, to the east, um, you should consider that the large park, uh, what we call the Panhandle Park, has a character to it where the, there is a pathway that walks all along uh, the, the creek. Uh, to various degrees of proximity. And this is essentially a trailhead at this end uh, of the park, the western end of the park, that um, has always uh, been insufficient both as a trailhead, um, you know, appropriate for uh, the quality of the, the path that's to the east, um, but also has exposed safety issues between the, the users of the park area and the maintenance employees. 95% of the, um, uh, you can go to the next slide, thanks. 95% of the traffic in terms of the maintenance workers is to the west. It's on to Miller Creek uh, Road and down to service the facilities, the community center, the main park. There is a percentage of work that goes on to the, to the east, but the proximity to, to Miller Creek is, is very important. We also uh, have located the building in a way that um, half of it uh, is, maintains the exact same proximity that the trailer has uh, on the, the northern side to, to the fence. Um, and I'll talk about the height in, in a second. Um, one of the improvements here clearly is that the path, not only in character, by being moved along the creek, makes the enjoyment of that area uh, uh, much greater, but it also separates all of the dog walkers and pedestrian traffic and the kids that kind of walk through this area from the maintenance workers, because currently they have to walk between the, uh, the existing building and, and the trailer. Um, there's traffic coming in from a 90 degree angle in the current scheme. In this scheme, the reason why we've located the entries, the secure entries to the east and west ends is to avoid any blind uh, exits of equipment into or outside of the facility. Um, you can go to the next slide, please. 
The overlay, um, again, you can see in red, the trailer underneath the area there just shows how at least that portion of the building is the exact same. Uh, it's actually we've reduced the, the, the low eave, but um, the proximity to the fence, at least to the neighbor on that side, is, is the same. So we feel like we have the same area of footprint of use, which has been established for 50 plus years. The district's coming up on its 60th anniversary. Um, but we have utilized uh, uh, enclosures to protect the equipment, taking it out of the path of, of the pedestrians um, who, who utilize the path, but uh, the main walking path. Um, but also it's protected behind, behind fencing. Next one. Um, we want to emphasize that this is a workshop use. It's not a garage. The access to it from the two ends is... Uh, allows vehicles to be parked in the western courtyard uh, and then for uh, at the staff discretion to be able to pull under and protect uh, the, in the covered area that's open on the, the left side of the, of the building. The right side is, a, is a, essentially like a carpentry workshop and other tools repair uh, workshop which contains the bathroom, a uh, very small um, uh, employee lounge and the secure area for, for tools. And the eastern courtyard then uh, is, uh, is is added on on that side. Um, next slide, please. One of the important things uh, for this process was to determine what is the minimum size. We we felt is in terms of width and uh, length that that we could not reduce this, despite the fact that our staff um, begged for more square footage. That we this is the smallest footprint that we could uh, maintain, and we feel like that's been established by the use pattern over the years. In terms of the height, we wanted to make sure that the um, facility didn't intrude uh, on the northern neighbors. So the the idea of having a, a pitched roof that puts the the ridge at the farthest southern point um, is shown in this. And really, the driver is the equipment. The high side of the uh, the high end of the um, the tractor and the other the trucks determine how low this roof can be. Next slide, please. And that shows the sh uh, the truck in in that context. Next slide. Um, the advantage of, of this, as I said, as you look at the top of the uh, proposal, is that it puts the ridge about 46 feet away from the closest section of the fence. Um, down below, you can also see in the cross section how there's a substantial, uh, substantially longer section that the existing structure takes up. Next slide. Again, this just shows the, how the roof has been uh, minimized. We have to take into consideration the longer span of the beams um, for the open space. And um, we have pulled it down to just what we minimally think uh, can be accommodated. You can see the space between the, um, the northern end of the, building, uh, the facility, the new building, and the fence. Um, that shows how we've also added some screening there. Next slide. And just to verify that, this is a, a, a level that shows uh, how the the low end is just below the, uh, uh, I think it's the 575 um, Miller, um, 575 address. Uh, uh, the other fence is a little bit higher. That's, um, that's I know that's our time. And so I, the, the rest of the slides that are in your package, I'll just say walk through the, the pieces and the simplicity of this building. Um, but we appreciate your consideration of, uh, of the work that's been put into this, uh, trying to make this best for everyone. Thank you. Are there any questions? Commissioner Dickinson? I have a question about the, the design and use of the building. The uh, rear wall of the building, the north wall um, of the building, has two windows. One's a restroom. Uh, the other's a break room. And I'm just curious what the typical activity would be in the break room. There are three. How many people, hours, that kind of thing. Right. The whole facility is only used during, uh, it's, 7 a.m. to 5 or so. So it's daytime hours. The existing um, uh, trailer that's in that location has the same number of windows as a bathroom window and a, and a window for the room. Administratively, there's nothing really goes on there in terms of uh, you know having a worker there uh, con constantly. But as a break room with three staff, uh, it's it's available to them to use during a, a lunch break or or otherwise. Um, okay. But uh, normal working hours only then? 7 to, f seven to uh, 5 or so. Monday to Friday. Okay, not on weekends. Right? Not on Friday. And we, we've, we've emphasized that we, we haven't even included uh, or proposed any kind of exterior lighting because we really don't. This facility will not be used off hours or on weekends at, at, at night. And the other question I had was regarding uh, uh, that same portion of the building. 
which is only six and a half feet away from the fence, I guess part of it six and a half feet away from the fence, is you showed landscaping in there. You've got a roof overhang, what I guess is like a seven foot fence along the property line. And I just wonder the likelihood of any landscaping actually growing in what's like a well. Yeah, the, uh, the existing trailer has landscaping behind, behind it that does grow in that area. Um, and so the, uh, in consultation with the landscape designer, um, the, the proposal was just continue the same line of, of what's already existing there with some slightly denser foliage. Where the trailer is on that side, um, or that property, that, that fence is slightly higher. So it will be significantly lower. It's more built out, the, uh, more landscaped. Uh, I should say, the on the east, I'm sorry, the western half of the building, uh, it's a lower f existing fence, um, and and it's more barren from even the property owner's side. So, uh, but we we do feel like um, when we have seen images of the view from the from that property, um, uh, we feel like the. the only about a foot or so above the fence is what might show, and that's even not the immediate low eave. That's the far eave, as I said, almost uh, 50 feet away. Um, and so, uh, you know, the the intent would be to to build up that uh, in, in a soft landscaping way, but it still would provide the view. Obviously, the view is in that upper looking up direction. If that answers your question. So you're uh, not proposing a new fence along that property on the western. No we we had not proposed any additional fencing. Although, if you know, if it were, it would certainly help to match the fence of the other property. From the district standpoint, I know in terms of financing, as a public you know body, we can't uh, offer to make improvements to a, a private property. But we could put on an, adja an additional adjacent fence on the district's property that, that matched or went along the entire width, if that would be helpful. That's, a, that's not a problem. And we do feel like that would, uh, as you can see in, in one of the other exhibits that was presented, that that would pretty much hide um, the facility completely. OK, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Theron? Uh, thank you for your presentation. Um, is this building, some of the correspondence I read described this as a drive-through building. Is that true? Yeah, thanks for the opportunity to clarify that. No. The, the, when you have doors on either end, uh, it makes it seem as if the whole intention is to be able to drive through. But given the, the amount of square footage that the district needs, in the workshop area, um, it will be full of equipment. The, so, so there is, as far as we're concerned, there's no wasted space. The, way, the pattern of usage during the day for the employees is that in the, the workshop we'll have equipment and things laid out. For example, um, playground equipment that's needing repair. I've seen that sitting in the workshop area for days while the staff try to get to it. Um, there will also be um, uh, standing equipment, carpentry uh, equipment in that space. So typically, that, you will not drive through that at all. In terms of the covered area, the covered uh, roofed area that has storage, and the, the uh, western court, the, the CSD has, uh, as you saw, a truck, a tractor, a mower, a few other uh, trailers. That will be brought in and out on a daily basis, packed away at night, and then, then brought out. Currently, what happens is all of that equipment, um, actually most of it, sits outside yeah. and that. can't be pulled in. We're going to pull all of that stuff behind the closed uh, walls of the uh, uh, slider of the fence, get as much of it underneath the, uh, um, the, the overhang, okay. and certainly won't bother needing to go through the facility because we don't need to go in that direction uh, typically for, for, for work anyway. OK, can I ask another question? Oh. Another question? Uh, you wish to? Uh, please. I'd like to, yeah. Please, yes. OK. Go ahead. Um, the other question I had was, where will that your truck turn around now. It was so, there was quite a bit of comment about the truck and the trailer being quite a length and needing a good size space. Right. Um, Michelle, is it possible to go backwards to the plan? I think maybe to show that a little bit more clearly. Uh, there, you, there you go. So the reality is that, um, and, and I, one of the other things I've done a lot of work with are parking uh, and uh, auto dealerships. I designed the Mercedes-Benz dealership in San Francisco and various other auto dealerships. I've done a lot with, with truck turning and large vehicle turning uh, for, for service. And um, you can never get enough space. We would love to have this facility be larger and have interior turnarounds in the courtyards. 
it's not, it, it was not going to happen because our intention was to reduce the square footage as, as small as we could. What will happen is that, and we tested this out with the story pulls up, is that trucks will, will pull in and will do one of two things. You could either, they could either pull forward off of Miller Creek and they can back into the area that's between the, um, uh, the uh, court, the horseshoe court, thanks, Eric. The horseshoe court, you're right. They will go back into that and essentially do three and four or five point terms to then back into the facility so that in the morning they can, they can pull out and, and, and take the vehicles as needed out of the area. Or they'll just pull straight in and then, and then back out. But it's basically that, that area. So there is no circular turnaround because vehicles can make four and five and six point turn, turns as they need to given our, our constraints. Um, and given the fact that we don't want to take the vehicles down to the east in any case, uh, since that's not really usually where the, where the work happens. And can you get by this building with a vehicle to serve the other end of the park area? So, so the, uh, the compromise here, which everything has seemed to be a, a compromise to a degree, is that the, what you can see in this slide is that we have separated the, currently the, the, the path, and it's a, it's a uh, failing asphalt path that comes from Miller Creek to the gates that you can see on the west. Um, that that is used both by people walking in and walking out, plus the staff driving in and out. We've created this new path that goes alongside it. And obviously the path, that's the pedestrian path that walks along, which really is just a gravel, you know, a loose gravel area defined with some edging. Um, as I said, most of the time we will not need to use that. But if there is a time, then the tractor has to go down that area or the truck needs to go down there to pick up or load. Um, it will be, it's I think eight feet or nine feet wide, it will be wide enough to, to take that down and there'll have to be controls for that time. But we think, feel like that is a safety uh, Im improvement over the, you know, relatively what we have now where people are just driving in the midst of, uh, of other pedestrians. And, and the last question I had. Well, can, I add, can I add to that a little bit, uh, just from a little bit more of a practical experience too, is when, whenever vehicles are moving east, uh, from that area, 99.9% .9 of the time, these are our very small little utility vehicles, with, yeah. you know, like a little Kawasaki or a little John Deere. Uh, and they're used primarily to go down and empty all the trash bins, uh, the trash receptacles that we have up and down the path. Um, on a very rare occasion, do we bring our actual full-size work truck and the trailer down there? And those occasions usually coincide with we work hand-in-hand -hand with a group called uh, STRAW, which is Students and Teachers Restoring a Watershed. And we partner with them they're doing invasive uh, removal and planting of That's native okay. species. That, yeah, so we'll bring the trailer down for, I, I, there's just very few instances where full-size vehicles are going in that direction. The, Thank you. The final thing with that in terms of safety is that the fire uh, chief has acknowledged that they can get past and use this. Uh, okay, this so my, my last Thank question you. is, it seems like when I was there yesterday that the top of bank is a lot closer to the existing back edge of the, in fact, I couldn't walk behind it without being, in, in, on the diagrams, however, well, especially this visual one, but on the, all the diagrams, it looks like the top of bank is projected to be eight or 10 feet away from it, which it doesn't seem to be the case today, you know? But uh, if you want to go back, Michelle, to the, uh, I think to back to the existing, so the, the Eric, if you can point to that yeah. line, that dash line is what is what has come off of the the last survey that was done, um, and th then, then we've got we use that line. That's the center of the creek, and then the next one is the actual bank, um, top of bank, right? Um, and then that's the line that we've used to come back the hundred hundred feet, um, and we we felt as if we were, it was pretty um, okay. uh, conservative in terms of that notion. It's not getting better. Uh, okay. It's okay. Harder. Thank you. Thank you. Co Commissioner Eller. Yeah, uh, thank you, Bill, for your presentation. A couple of questions for you. Um, just a number of issues, one of which is uh, roof material and the appearance of it, uh, skylights in the roof, and whether there's security lighting that would be active during the evening. And so lighting, the skylights, roof material, the visual plane. Right, right. Um, the uh, basically the roof material is, uh, is an asphalt, um, uh, you know, single layer um, 
ply, ply roofing, which we imagine to be a, a neutral dark gray. We would love to have it be lighter for, for energy purposes, but in terms of glare and you know the fact that it is tilted that way, um, we would keep it to a, a, a medium uh, a gray tone. Um, there are skylights that are, uh, in, Michelle, I don't know if you can go to the sections down in a few. Uh, there we go. So, so these the, the skylights that are there, we, we want to be able, to, since this facility is used during the day exclusively, uh, we want to be able to get as much daylighting for their use as possible and reduce the, the um, energy footprint. Um, the benefit of this particular design with the shed roof is that it allows us to have these clear story lights on the southern side to do that job. We felt like it would be best from a daylighting side to, to uh, you know, bring some to the other side of the workshop. There, because the facility isn't used at, light, night, at night, we don't see any kind of uh, night, uh, day, uh, or sorry, nighttime um, lighting problems, um, uh, you know, emanating from the use of those, those skylights. And um, in terms of security lighting, uh, well, for, for years, the existing building, which is not a secure building, has operated without any kind of security lighting. We're going to be upgrading our Obviously, we're going to have a, a secure building with locks, and um, but I, I see no need to have any kind of additional lighting, or even. And in fact, for the people that do walk their their dogs and, and walk by in the evenings during the winter, the last thing we want is to have security lights, motion sensor lights going off and on. So, given that that's a part of the building code that will require that uh, occup that uh, sense uh, sensors for the exterior lights, we would just avoid their use completely. Okay. Are there any other questions for the applicant? Oh, <clears throat> Commissioner Bailey? Yeah, hi. Um, one of the considerations, I mean, one of the analyses that we have to make is that there are no, as you stated, that there are no other um, better locations or whatnot for, for, the, um, for the buildings. Can you talk about what locations you, you looked at? Sure. Um, I'll just mention it briefly. Eric, uh, I, I came on. I'm familiar with the... Uh, decades worth of discussions before, but, but Eric can talk about the formal process of looking at the other ones. Um, in terms of the green areas that are located here, anything um, to the west, uh, these little tiny patches of green to the, to the west are, both would have extensive uh, utility, uh, you know, all the, all this, uh, sorry, electrical, pl um, plumbing, um, sewer, that all goes to Miller Creek Road. So. There's an economic infeasibility with those. They don't, they're not large enough to put this building in a uh, non-SEA area in any case. Uh, and they just exacerbate, they just switch out two neighbors with another two different neighbors down, down the road. They also make it longer uh, intersection of the staff and the pedestrian users of the path. The first screen area down um, that's uh, on, the, on the left side there, that is a, uh, that's sort of, there's the main park, which is below, and then that's the secondary park. Both of those parks are chock full of kids in the summer uh, with the 500 or so kids we have through the, uh, the summer camps. Um, I will say that this diagram shows the ephemeral stream uh, on the top. There is also an ephemeral stream. Uh, we didn't show it uh, because it seemed somewhat redundant, but yeah, Eric, there it is. It's coming right, right through there. So really this map, that green area to the north and south could even be constrained a little bit more if, uh, you know, if we wanted to drive the point home. But um, then in terms of the largest feasible locations, you have the, the main park itself, which has a large bank as you come off the road, mm -hmm. uh, making it private. Um, the parking lot itself, which is minimal given our, our uses. And, um, and then the, build, the community center itself, in front of it, or there is the uh, the pool building. Again, that's it's, it, we can't see how you could append this type of a usage onto the front of this public building. The final one is the the corner um, that has conflicts. First of all, with the with the uh, fire department's uh, circulation, the driveway of the fire department goes right across the path that the park vehicles would need to be crossing and uh, the maintenance workers would constantly be crossing uh, the, the fire department traffic. Um, in addition to the fact that we did not have extensive discussions or proposals with DPW about putting in a, a building and w w uh, that would require its own separate curb cut in that location, but I, am, I can guarantee you that there is no way on a turn 
a tight turn that has a lot of traffic coming off of it into our community from Lucas Valley Road that a curb cut uh, could be put in, in that area. I'm sorry, you, you, you need to be speaking in, in, into the microphone. Uh, Eric was pointing out that there's a, there's a median in the middle of uh, Miller Creek Road that runs from Lucas Valley Road all the way uh, along the length, length of it, so it would be another access uh, restriction. Uh, thank you. Thanks, um, I, I had one question. Um, I, I'm still a little puzzled about the, um, uh, the vehicles. Um, so, so you're saying most vehicles will be backing into the facility? They'd be turning around and backing into the facility? I, I think it's the type of thing where the, it's, as the staff learn how to use their, their new mil building, they could, they could decide which way to load in and unload the, the daily uh, startup of the facility every morning versus how they, they tuck it away at night. So uh, based upon you know, how that would pan out, you, your option would be drive the truck in in the evening and pull right into the lot, take all the vehicles, uh, because pretty much on a daily basis, uh, the, you know, the truck is kind of coming out and a few of the vehicles, they're not all coming out every day, but, but there are a couple that would be the highest use and they would just pull in. And then they would, because of the location of an existing horseshoe pit, which we would like to keep, they would have to back out uh, to the point, to the area that I located, back, backing up, pulling back out, and then going through the gate. So it's like a T a T-turn. Conversely, they could, uh, they could do the opposite. They could pull in through the gate um, that is shown and, and then pull in and, and back down the road. Also, just to be clear, we have one truck. So as far as full-size vehicles go, we only have one truck that's used by the three maintenance staff. Typically, when they come out in the morning, they're out there doing their jobs. If it needs to come in, as Bill stated, it can go straight in and then either back out and do a little three-point and back out, or they can back it in. But they don't constantly come and go. The vehicles that do come and go much more often are, are much smaller utility vehicles that can turn around in a space of about a handful of feet, okay. um, you know, just the small little four-wheel drive vehicles oh. that access the trails. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Are there any other questions at this time? We, we may come back to you with questions you. at the end, but um, thank you for your presentation. If there are any um, uh, organizations that have spokespeople, um, uh, please step forward. You have five, uh, identify the organization you're speaking for, and you'll have five minutes, and, and then um, we'll uh, have the general public speak. I'm going old school today, so uh, bear with me. Well, you, you need to speak into the microphone, though, so... Uh, I don't think that... Mic is the microphone on? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, or we won't, we won't have a record of your, your words. Okay. So, my name is Stephen Nessel, and in uh, nine, uh, 2010, uh, we started Friends of uh, Marinwood Park, and what we've done is uh, restoration work, there's a completely citizen-led uh, group. Um, we've also installed interpretive signs on the um, uh, on the trail um, and have maintained them. Uh, and it's an ongoing process. It's just basically it's neighbors on uh, Quietwood, and we're real concerned about this. For, before I begin this, um, I'd like to ask you. Um, when was the, where was the first place you saw your, a butterfly or dipped your, your toe in a creek? Chances are it was in a park, and that's what we're here to talk about today. They're talking about buildings. We're talking about a park. We don't think these are, things are too, we have uh, incompatible goals here. We want uh, a park building uh, that respects the Marin County general plan and is practical for our workers and safe for our workers. Why reject this? Well, there's three reasons why. I'm, I'm waiting for my cameraman to catch up to me. Um, it violates the stream conservation area. Uh, it violates important um, goals in the Marin uh, County general plan of uh, archaeological resources. It doesn't recognize those resources. And third, it impacts uh, park space and accessibility. 
There is, however, a better solution, and that's what, what I'd like to discuss. If you could, if you could bring it in a little closer so it can be read. Um, so here is uh, the same picture you saw earlier. This is the stream conservation area in blue. And there's actually two sites that are environmentally preferred. One, which uh, the Friends of Marinwood uh, Park uh, offered, uh, is completely outside the uh, stream conservation area, and that's next to the fire station. But we actually agree with the analysis of the, uh, uh, of the CSD, and we think that a better location is very close to where you have um, the proposal. Marinwood um, did successfully, uh, you know, they, they made a case that there's no other place for this building, and I actually agree. But what they didn't uh, say is why this building must be so big. This building is twice the size of the facility at McGinnis Park, uh, which is a 70-acre park. It's five times the size. It employs uh, twice the number of workers. And it was constructed in 2018, and it seems to meet their needs. What's different? The real problem with this uh, park, or, or, or with the Marinewood po uh, proposal, is access. Now, uh, the architect talked about five or six point turns. And I don't know if any of you have worked uh, and driven a truck. I have. I've loaded materials. I know what's involved. Workers work uh, what is easy, and they don't want to waste their time turning and what have you. What they're proposing, this is the uh, a model of the current, um, this is their pr proposal. They're proposing that trucks have to back out 150 to 300 feet among uh, on this path or make a five or six point turn. It's not really practical for daily use and it's quite it's dangerous. We have children, we have seniors, we have dog walkers, we have all kinds of people in this space. They can't do it in front because the F4250 um, it requires 60, uh, a 60 foot radius to turn around in, and you've got protected trees on both sides. Plus, which was not mentioned, you have the uh, a, a drainage area or a bioremediation pond right in the middle of this. There is really no room other than to go forward or backwards. Um, the logical thing, if you get stuck inside the building, is to go all the way through. And the only area that's open is in the middle of the park. And this has not been studied, OK? Um, so, what, so what we're proposing is maximizing the area here uh, outside the stream conservation area. With Excuse the, me. It, so it's been five minutes. If you could bring your remarks to a close, I'd appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Well, I, I have a few more things and I can finish my arguments if you like. Um, we're, we're proposing some a smaller building, the si same size as Miller Creek, mm -hmm. or uh, I'm sorry, same size as McGinnis Park. It would look something like this. It, it would basically a side access garage, which is, it's the standard for all parks in Marin County. I have not found a single facility that is long and narrow. And, that's, and the problem with that facility as design is the interior volume is wasted. It's a complete waste. Um, we have a design uh, called Option 3 that was offered by Irv Schwartz. He, he'll probably tell me he doesn't like it. I, I, I need later, to bring but, your remarks um, to a close, please. But this. This is a reason why you need to reject the current proposal and ask them to develop 
another proposal that respects the county plan, respects our parks, respects our, our archaeological resources, and the access, the re whole reason we have parks is for recreation and nature enjoyment. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Is there anybody else representing an organization? If not, I'd, I'd ask those who wish to speak to, uh, to uh, stand in the corridor here or be, be prepared to jump up. Um, and we'll try to move through this. Um, hello, you have three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair Curran, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Neil Sorensen. Our family has uh, owned a house and lived in the Marinwood area for about 30 years. Um, I've reviewed the plans for this project, looked at the initial study, and I believe that the project would be a benefit to the area. It would certainly improve the streamside conservation issues that are there. And I think the uh, Marinwood CSD has done an excellent job at both community outreach and working with the community to come up with this design, and I fully support the project. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Is that you, ma'am? Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Linda. I, I'm a 45-year resident of Marinwood. If, if you please um, speak into the microphone. I'm sorry. You can lower the microphone a bit and... You can't hear me? <gasps> sorry, I thought I talked loud. <laughs> we, we just, for the recording, it's important, so thank you for lowering Okay. It. So I live one block off the Panhandle Trail. I walk dogs in this beautiful green open space, going by the park maintenance shed four or five times a week. I participated in dozens of the Marinwood Park and Rec and board meetings over the last four to five years when the new park maintenance replacement compound was discussed. Everyone agrees this should happen for staff safety and efficiency. For several of those years, the plan was to remove and replace the dilapidated building and storage areas and keep the air-conditioned office, break room, restroom, communication trailer. Keep it. It's still working. It's, it's not very old. A new workshop and storage area would be added just a bit further west away from the creek. This was called option number three, which Stephen just referred to, drawn by engineer and prior board member Er Shorts. I think he's back there. Adding customized prefab buildings and one or two fence storage areas will cost about $75,000, which is less than one year of Marinwood's share of Park Measure A tax funds. Later on, when the pro project was discussed with the chosen architect, it morphed into a financially open-ended project with a single design. Recently, we've seen more detail. The architect's design has always been a 160-foot-long compound with an Eichler-style building in the center and two entry courtyards on the sides. With custom amenities such as the four skylights, special windows, and even special draperies for the special windows. One third of the inside of the entire compound is used as a drive through for all these vehicles, the utility vehicles, the trucks, the, the materials vehicles, and other heavy equipment. A choice was made by the district manager and the board to use all of Marinwood's Park Measure A funds for many years, which will probably be over half a million dollars. We get about 80,000 a year. We're gonna use this what? How many minutes is that? Three. Sorry, if you could just uh, I, wrap up your. I your don't comments. think so. Well, um, because no, because I have it. Thirty-five <laughs> seconds, forty-five seconds, forty seconds. I, I'm sorry. If you could just um, try to uh, wrap up your remarks, I okay. appreciate it. A choice was made by the district manager to use all of the park measure A funds. Marin would would get better use from its taxpayer dollars such as resurfacing its pool, making necessary park and community center improvements for safety and ADA compliance. Marinwood documentation says a new compound will have a fully contained facility with a smaller overall use footprint. This is not true. The document does not detail the massive amounts of open space that is currently used to store heavy equipment, such as the maintenance truck and dump trailer, utility vehicles, loads of district trash, waiting to go to the dump. The open space also contains huge piles of vegetation debris. You've seen the pictures. Okay, we have. I, I, I uh, do need to bring your remarks from to the a parks close. along the creek. It's very unsightly. The district also has huge piles of mulch trees and shrubs from tree companies 
for later use. These will always be on our open space. Thank you. And I believe you sent a letter, and we do read our correspondence. Okay. Thank you, sir. If you'd please step up. Three minutes. Thank you. My name's Tom Horn. Uh, I live at 291 Bowling Circle in the Hamilton area of Nevada. I'd like to clarify for the record that I do not represent uh, the MCSD as I put on the pink card. I was unclear of the, on the concept. However, I have followed this project with great interest. Uh, I served uh, Marinwood CSD as district manager from 1997 through 2014. To my lasting regret, this facility remains a health and safety concern and has done for all of those 18 years, not to mention uh, an affront to the uh, uh, aesthetics of the park. Uh, over those 18 years, there have been a number of Band-Aids, roof repairs, drainage improvements, emergency ditches, and tarping the roof uh, in, in recent years and most notably the installation of the mobile construction field office to address the most important health and safety issues for the workers. Uh, this was always intended to be a temporary measure. Through all the years and plans for renovation of the existing facility, roof repairs, drainage repairs, the district always came up against the facts that the facility, the garage itself, was too small. The facility was in the wrong place, too close to the stream bank. And we were repeatedly told by builders that it would be cheaper to remove the, the existing garage structure and replace it new. I also like to say that I uh, uh, appreciate that the design utilizes the elements and complements the Eichlers in the adjacent neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. A minute to spare. Okay. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> Please. Good afternoon, commissioners. My name is John Toon. I actually emailed my statement to Ms. Levinson last week because I wasn't sure if I could make it, but since I'm here, I thought I'd put a face to it. Um, our family has been in Marinwood residence for almost 30 years. We have really enjoyed and benefited greatly from our park, community center, pool, open space, and pathways. I have over 30 years experience in maintaining and managing city parks. I understand what resources are needed to do uh, function effectively. Having a good facility to base operations is essential for being productive and efficient. This is particularly true with the limited personnel that are many municipalities and districts face today. Uh, the current facility in Marinwood is no longer safe or functional. It has become a hazard and a liability. I believe much effort has been put, spent in determining the best solution for this issue. And I, in my view, the project application before you uh, meets these goals. It is my hope that you approve this project from new maintenance facility and improve the surrounding areas as proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Commissioners, I'm Irvin Schwartz. Uh, I've been a resident and homeowner of the Marinwood, in the Marinwood CSD since 1966. Uh, in those 53 plus years, I've taken an active interest in the district. I've been on their Parks and Rec Commission, their Fire Commission. I've been on the board a couple of times, and I was a volunteer firefighter. So I'm interested in the district and its uh, prospering in the future. Uh, when I first moved into the district, the maintenance facility was a year old. I also had uh, a full head of brown hair. Uh, I think I have weathered in that time period better than the building has. You've seen the pictures of the tarps over it. One of the last times it was tarped, uh, one of the uh, park people put his foot right through the, the roof. It needs to be replaced. It could be replaced where it is, right on the edge of the creek bank, and we wouldn't even have to be here talking to you folks today. But the district decided that it was more appropriate to move the building back away from the creek, allowing then the park use of the area to be adjacent to the creek rather than between the two, the two maintenance buildings. 
the current maintenance facility and the modular building. Uh, we believe this is a much superior, I believe it's a much superior uh, place for the building. The concern about the uh, parking or the turning and access to the building, I believe, has been uh, inappropriately uh, characterized. Uh, I just happen to be a civil engineer as well and know a little bit about driveways and turning movements and things like that. And it appears very obvious that someone could drive in off of Miller Creek Road, either drive straight into the building, and then back out and make a, a turn what would be like a hammerhead turnaround, which is rather common, or drive in, turn into the hammerhead, and back into the building. There's no need to make circular turnarounds. And that's really with just the, the, the big truck, which is just a, a three-quarter ton pickup truck. All of the other buildings, as mentioned, or all of the other facilities, as mentioned, are quite a bit smaller. So it's my recommendation, and I hope that you would approve this uh, design review application as submitted so the district can finally get on with replacing the unsafe deteriorated structure. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, my name's Jeff Naylor. Um, I've lived in Marin Wood for 34 years. Uh, my family has enjoyed our wonderful park for all that time, and I, um, on numerous occasions, have walked the uh, path called the Panhandle. Um, the CSD board has made several attempts over the, over the years to try and replace this uh, dilapidated structure that we're here to discuss today, and has backed off on all those occasions heretofore uh, due to protests from a vocal minority. Despite our park's size, it's well used and it demands constant care by the three remaining uh, full-time park employees who use vehicles and other equipment. The district has very few alternatives to house a maintenance structure um, that won't exacerbate safety issues, encroach on heavily utilized park space, um, or basically remain on top of the creek which is something that we've tried to avoid. Um, we must have approval finally to reduce the environmental impacts of this uh, facility, protect district assets, and just as importantly, if not more importantly, provide our staff with a safe location to park and maintain our vehicles and assets. I'm aware of nearby neighbors' um, complaints or concerns, shall we say, of the size and the location of the proposed structure, um, but I believe that we can either mitigate those or come, come to some um, understanding that does mitigate them. And I talk about line of sight issues, I talk about safety issues, I talk about um, primarily um, size issues as well. And my understanding is, if perhaps I'm wrong, but my understanding is this consolidated structure will be even less than the numerous uh, facilities and the open space and debris that we currently store on this property. This gives us the opportunity to store our assets in a safe place, not have to replace them every four to five years from rust, not have to take debris and just have it out there for the trail users to walk by every day, um, and makes all the sense in the world to move away from the, from the creek. So I hope the commission agrees with the recommendation, recommendation of the planner and gives its approval for this proposal so that we can finally move on to permitting, engineering, um, site improvements, et cetera, that are long, long overdue. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi. My name is Leah Green. I am a 15-year resident of Marinwood. I have also served on the Park and Rec Commission and on the Board of Directors. And I echo everything that everybody has said in support of this project. It's, I think, really at the bottom line. It's not perfect, but it represents progress. And I've seen this kicking around for many, many years. And I, everybody's in agreement that something needs to be done. So I'm just really grateful that we're here today in front of you because that means something will get done no matter what, right? We're moving forward. So I think, you know, we can talk about all the various, the little itty bitty permutations and I trust that that's your job. And so I just urge you that this is 
the smallest design, the most efficient design, so much thought and care has been put into this. There have been so many hearings, so many meetings. The public has been invited to, um, to give their feedback. That's been incorporated. And as a resident, um, I just want to see this move forward. And, you know, finally, <laughs> and something that we can all be proud of and that we can all stand behind as a community, which I think is progress and not perfection. So thank you for giving all of us the opportunity to speak here today. Thank you. Hello. Hello, my name is Luke Fretwell, and I am the Recreation Director for the Marinwood Community Services District. I don't know if that should have counted as an organization to be at the front of the line, but um, I'm here to represent the Parks and Maintenance staff um, who I oversee uh, in this role. I've worked for Marinwood for 11, almost, just about 11 years, and I've been the um, manager for the Parks Maintenance staff for um, the last two years, uh, just under the last two years. And I'm here to, um, to represent Marco Giron, who's been with us for almost 30 years as a Parks Maintenance worker, uh, Esteban Chavez, who's been with us just under 20 years, um, and uh, Callum Reed, who's been with us just under three months. Um, he's our newest hire. Um, but uh, a few things that have come up I want to address just very quickly. Uh, we've talked a lot about um, the size of the building. and uh, These three gentlemen uh, love Marinwood. They work really hard to make the grounds beautiful. They come back every day to a dilapidated shop. I make them wear uh, respirators now anytime they're going to spend more than a few minutes in the work area because you get a headache after five minutes in the shop. Uh, the roof is untrustworthy and there's standing water uh, in the garage. It's just uh, abysmal conditions for, for people to work in. Um, and it's just, it's just awful to, to be contending with that. They adapt. They are flexible. They do what they need to do. And they do not complain uh, about this shop, uh, which is um, amazing. I'm sure they do behind my back. But um, <laughs> one thing about a vehicle turnaround, well, when the story poles were up, we were out in the trucks, in the vehicles, um, and we did try out how do we turn around, how do we get in, how do we get out, how is this going to work. And um, the truth is it, it was going to work fine. It's really not an issue that's, that's come up on the staff level, and um, we're not really concerned at all. There'll be a little bit of getting used to the new um, ingress, egress. And uh, we're, I'm very confident that my crew will be able to adapt and adjust to the, the new conditions with, with no problem. And um, another thing that's come up is the size of the building. Uh, is, is this too big? Is Could it be smaller? Um, one thing the staff is concerned about is that we will not have enough room for all of our equipment and all of the gear in the, the new um, the proposed shop size. Uh, it's going to be filled to the brim. We're going to be doing everything we can to make, uh, make use of that and, and find our way around. But there's no way we're going to be driving vehicles through the middle of the shop. Um, we're barely going to be able to fit everything we need to have in there for all of the projects we do. Maintaining the open space, our three parks, the swimming pool, the buildings, um, and, and all of the repairs and maintenance that go along with that. So right now, this, the staff is currently being required to do most of the work outside, um, weather permitting, uh, because the shop is not workable. It's not safe. Um, and I know that with uh, this new proposed shop, um, we're very excited about uh, being able to do work in a workshop, store our equipment under um, lock and key, uh, under a roof, uh, be protected from the elements, go into a shop that doesn't have water on the floor, that doesn't make us uh, you know, get a headache from, from breathing. And I'm very confident that our staff that's adapted for so many years to these current abysmal conditions will be able to adapt to the, uh, to the driveway. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Sir? If you'd be sure to move the microphone to your, sure. to your mouth. Good afternoon. Bill McNicholas. Uh, afternoon, Madam Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, I'm Bill McNicholas, 48, going on 49-year resident of Marinwood. And I'm here not to support or moving ahead with this project. I do support the need for the maintenance shed. And I really feel we need to downsize the project to bring it into things. I totally agree with... Uh, Stephen Nestle on his proposals, and I feel just notes this has not been really an open process with the community. We have turned in on his committee has turned in over a 200 signature petition requesting a public forum on it. It was can't, uh, denied by the service district and rejected. Many of my neighbors never even heard about the project or what needs to be done or are they aware of it. 
There isn't even a budgeted plan that's been put out on what this is going to cost. So here we are sitting here going, it's an open-ended project. The story polls which were put in do not really tell the full story of the proposed facility. It's only on the building. It does not cover the two yards on either side on that on what happens. But it also has, they're going to have to level the ground and probably take up to four feet back near the fence away for allowing the building to be level, which then could create more drainage or severe drainage going into the creek and possible contamination. Vehicle movement's been discussed. Uh, looking at the plans now, walking the area, I think it's going to be a problem, especially if you've got the truck with the trailer and maneuvering around through the area, that you're going to have to get down to the meadow, which is about halfway down the path, to turn around. That's a concern. Uh, there hasn't been a formal EIR. It's been conducted within the service district itself. And we know of, it's been brought up about the uh, SCE, and it's about the Miwok Village, and the opening to the public park, being a public park. I'm not going to go into detail since it's been discussed in the past and previously. Regretfully, though, to wrap up, many of the no on the project or want, the pro want a new maintenance shed but are no on this specific project can't be here because they have to be at work and can't take the time off to be here and present their cases. So we're trying to do it for them. I would like to say thank you for listening and appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Is there any other member of the public who wishes to speak? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. First time I get to do that. You're done. So I'll bring it with that. I'd like to bring it back to the commission and um, see if, if uh, anybody wishes to make a comment or discuss this item. And I think uh, clearly one of the issues that's been raised uh, repeatedly is size um, and, um, and something about vehicle motions. And so I just want to take it back to the commission and see how people are feeling. Commissioner Dickinson? Actually, on both those issues, I had questions for the applicant. The applicant agrees. I have a Could please step back up, and and just uh, try to keep your remarks, your answers concise. <laughs> Appreciate it. The first question has to do with the need for the covered courtyards, which are, I mean, add considerably to the to the building coverage. It's a gravel courtyard, basically a parking area, that has a roof over it. Uh, if you're referring to the courtyards on the east and west side, they're yes. not they're not covered. They're actually open. They're just fenced and enclosed. Uh, but the coverage only covers the parking area where the rolling stock will go, and then the workshop itself. Oh, okay. I misread the plans. Then I thought that was actually a roof on the plans. Ha the roof extent half of the roof is the workshop, carpentry workshop. Right. The other half of the stu of the of the roof is for covered storage, and then. Unfortunately, we couldn't extend the roof over the entire fenced area, so that gives us at least some level of security protection. Okay, and then my second question was um, the, the suggestion from Merv Schwartz about a hammerhead turnaround. I mean, it does look like there's room to do that on the west end of the courtyard, a gravel turnaround space where... Well, one of the nice things about doing the story polls is that we could actually test. When you saw the pictures of the vehicles parked in front, we tested to see if that hammerhead could work, and there was plenty of space to do it. So I don't, um, other than the, uh, what Luke had said about his staff being able to do it and testing it and it working, um, uh, you know, it seems to be an answer um, that, w that, that does work, um, contrary to the other explanations. I, the only thing I can assume about the con... Con, uh, the, the counterpoint is that somehow a truck can't make up, can't back up, that it has to do a circle, and that's just right. It may take more than one movement, but it looks like there's area there to do it. If it's gravel, there is the flat, gravel. There's that whole area is 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 flat area. Um, overall, the, the the grade is very slight, so it's it's we we did it. <laughs> okay, so if it became a problem backing out, you could just add that. 
right? Yeah. Okay, thank you. The, I, just, I have a follow-up question, and then Commissioner Eller. Um, it, would any of the turning motions that you anticipate send any vehicles over the pedestrian path? All of the circulation currently is in the pedestrian path. There's no separation. In the pedestrian path. In the, in the, uh, in the hammerhead turn, mm -hmm. you would have to cross it with one truck probably once a day, one, one time. And okay. we have three employees I'm just there, trying to I, uh, yeah, no, I, I get the right Thanks. visual in my mind. Um, thank you. Commissioner Eller. Yeah, just a, a, another follow-up on the hammerhead. Yes, it crosses the path and access to the horseshoe courts, uh, but there's no indication of what the uh, support is. Is it gravel in that area? I'm very concerned about even once a day in, in bad weather, please. Right. Yeah. No, thank you for that, Commissioner. Um, the, the current, um, uh, that whole area is covered with gravel that over 50 years has been added and added and added. Uh, if you were to, to go down there today, you'd see a lot of the needles from the pines that are there. The pines are going to be removed. Uh, the removal of the pines, I should say, which are non-native, and we have a separate arborist report about why those should go, and years of complaints about them, give us even greater facility to, to make the turn on that gravel area uh, than we even have uh, currently. Commissioners, are there other questions? Does anybody care to um, uh, commence uh, discussion or voting? Question. Okay, Commissioner Bailey. Um, can I just want to ask Michelle or, or um, Jeremy the questions that um, one of the last um, public comments brought up about notice and opportunity for public to participate in, um, you know, the discussion around what was planned. Um, if that's for Michelle or if that's for the applicant. As far as for the design review application. Mm -hmm. So we posted notice um, at the site mm -hmm. shortly after getting the application, which I believe is in May of 2019. Mm -hmm. um, that notice has been up at the site. It was up on Friday. <laughs> um, and then once the application was complete, we sent out green public notice postcards to residents within 625 feet of the entire parcel. Mm -hmm. So that, and then we have a project webpage that has been up. Um, so that was the county's required public notification, and the applicants can speak to. Can we add to? Please. Uh, and then also to be clear, if you, the, one of the last documents I sent to Ms. Levinson uh, contains a chronicle list of dates and blurbs. Those blurbs were published into board. Uh, public board meeting packets and then were subsequently discussed in public board meetings over 30 times. That doesn't also include what happened in our PNR commission meetings, uh, which was another dozen or so meetings uh, minimum at least, as well as several presentations that Mr. Hansel came in and gave with uh, much better software than we're able to do here with bringing in his 3D CAD models and showing and taking in a lot of public feedback, which then also resulted in some levels of modifications. Obviously, we can't make modifications to every single request that is made, but they were all listened to, and a lot of them did result in the product that is in front of you today. And given, given that the board is a public body, um, its, its decision to, to do this approval prior, a year prior to even this, this meeting is something that was noticed uh, and voted on and discussed and open, unlike most other projects that might come before you. And the environmental document also went through all of its legal noticings, too, with a 30-day published notice and through all of the environmental regulatory agencies as well as in the newspaper uh, and open public hearing for that process as well. We didn't, we didn't see that document. And can you just um, respond to the question about cut and fill? Is there? Uh, the site is pretty much flat. Um, the, just to the, uh, so the current trailer... Uh, there's a berm. The neighbors on the north side are up about four and a half feet. The trailer that sits there it has a has a cut with some uh, of, a, of about three feet or so, might even mm -hmm. be less than that, thirty inches. Um, and so, what we're proposing to do for this building is that's the only area where there needs to be some uh, cut, and it's just continuing the same uh, um, re retention ground retention that's been existing to uh, behind the trailer. So extending the, the retention that's behind the trailer to, to the, the other west, part of the building. To the west, and that just, and, and the, I calculated the amount of fill that's in the application, uh, or sorry, the amount of cut, it's so small that we will need to 
uh, fill the flat area underneath the, the slab because the east end of the site is lower by about 18 inches than the west end. So we will just need to just sort of spread that around. Um, and I should say that in terms of the 15 foot high, the 15 feet is from the lowest corner, which is the southwest, southeast corner. So by the time you're at the, at the southwest corner, it's only about 13 foot six high. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Eller. Uh, just for uh, staff real quick, thank you, gentlemen. Um, mention of archeological um, remains or asset uh, on this site, um, not mentioned in the staff report, assume that uh, as a park it's been disturbed, whatever it might have been. Uh, can you speak to that at all? Was that a consideration? Um, so as part of their district's environmental review, they had a, prepared a cultural resources mm -hmm. report, um, which, which found that it was not likely that there were going to be encounters with cultural resources, but um, the county's outdoor construction activity um, uh, conditions would be included in a building permit mm -hmm. for this project, which speak to in the event that cultural resources are found during construction, that construction is stopped and the appropriate um, authorities are, are notified and certain procedures are followed. Commissioner Farron? I have a question for staff as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. There was a comment made that this wasn't a formal CEQA process. I saw mitigated in that deck in the, in the, <clears throat> with the filings here. Was there a formal CEQA document or not? Yes. So it the was. district prepared a um, initial study and a mitigated NED deck that was mm -hmm. certified. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Okay, um, our, our commissioner who's in this district has been recused, so um, he's not here to speak first. Commissioner Dickinson? Mm -hmm. Since I was previously the commissioner from the district, <laughs> and I'm now an at-large commissioner, I'll take the, the prerogative. But um, the, there are several issues that are not before us. And one is management of the district, how the project's gonna be financed, um, how the district noticed their meeting, that those aren't issues before us. What's before us is an application for design review. The biggest planning issue is the location within the SCA. And I am convinced, uh, based on the evidence before us, that this alternative is superior to what exists out there now. Um, the alternative analysis, I think, is reasonable. Uh, I don't particularly disagree with any of the conclusions that the one exhibit that went through each potential alternative site and listed the reasons why those weren't feasible, I think are reasonable conclusions. Um, I think it is important to note that right now the buildings are 100% within the SCA. The proposed building is 85% and farther away from the creek, some of the existing buildings are right on the top of the bank now. So in terms of the intent of the SCA, it moves it as far away from the top of the bank as you can in a reasonable location. In terms of the potential impacts, the district did the biological assessment, they did an initial study, they made a determination on the, um, on the um, uh, negative declaration, which is their decision, we're a responsible agency, but not the one that makes that decision. I mean, if we disagreed with them, we could raise other issues, but I don't see any reason um, to disagree with that. I think the project is, an re uh, is a reasonable one. Uh, I think it significantly improves the public access through that portion of the site, whereas right now you walk basically through the corporation yard. Uh, I think it would be a lot more pleasant experience for people using the park than what's there now. So um, I am su prepared to uh, support the application as recommended by staff. The one additional condition that, that, that I might suggest is that I think there would be advantage to extending that fence 
that already exists behind um, 565 Quiet Wood across the, the common property line with 575 Quiet Wood. Uh, because of the location of the building, the elevation of the building, and all of the fence will do a large part of uh, screening the building from that yard, which is the most open view. So I would suggest that we get to a motion as a possible um, as a possible addition. But beyond that, I'm prepared to move the um, staff recommendation. Uh, b uh, before we hear from other commissioners, I would just like you to clarify for me what. When you say a fence in that area, do you mean up a, up against the new uh, building? Um, along the common property line. Right okay. now, the survey shows that the fence along, this is the western of the two, yes. two houses there. Yes. The fence is actually a couple feet into their property. So they obviously have a right to build a fence on the property line, which will actually be several feet farther away than their existing fence actually is. But I think there is an advantage to have a screening fence across the rear of that <coughs> house at um, uh, 575. Thank you. Commissioner Theron? Yeah, I, I thought when I read through this and went out there and took a look at it and so forth that this, it's a good idea. It's certainly a good idea and, and the park, all the parks in open space need a, a decent maintenance facility. The problem I was having was how can I make a finding uh, regarding the 100 foot setback? And so uh, I believe it rests in the, which our staff has usually gave us good competent backup. I double checked it to make sure you were right, but the de definition of feasibility, um, because it, it, there are alternate sites, even though they may, are not workable as was shown here, but there is other space. Um, and it's not, so it's not entirely within the SCA, um, but it, is, it can be feasibly developed. And I think that's, that's where I feel like I finally settled on. Um, I can make a finding that this is not feasible for a lot of reasons. One, it includes social and economic issues can be brought into consideration when you just decide whether it's feasible or not. There's considerable social impact here. My granddaughter went to summer camp there. It's a wonderful place. Uh, and I've been there quite a bit. And so uh, I feel that there's a, a, an extensive and well used and quite full social activity that goes on in that park. Uh, so I, I, I'm confident that I can go back to say yes it is um, within the countywide plan to be able to say that this isn't feasible to put it somewhere else. As far as I'm going to go for right now. Any other commissioners uh, care to comment before we take a vote? Okay, is there a motion? Commissioner Dickinson, you want to turn that into a motion for us, please? Uh, yes, just a second. I'll move that the uh, Planning Commission adopt the uh, draft resolution and the staff report approving the Marinwood Community Service District Design Review at 775 Miller Creek Road in San Rafael um, with the findings and conditions included in that with the additional condition that the um, that a fence be constructed along the common property line with 575 Quietwood Ave Avenue similar to that that exists at 565 Quietwood Avenue. I think I understand the uh, motion. Uh, we would probably justify that change in the finding regarding privacy under the design review, if that's acceptable. Second. Uh, okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The measure carries unanimously. Thank you. I do want to state that um, there's, a, there's a typo, um, uh, it just it's, relevant typo for the under the appeals rights um, that this matter may be appealed to the to the Board of Supervisors no later than eight business days from the date of this decision which is just incorrect and, and it, it should be of course today January 27 not the February 6 that's referenced there uh, to be to be clear um, I, I thank everyone and the hearing is closed Good job.
Nice work, Peggy. <laughs>